Welcome. It's time for some more creative way of shaping. And by creative, I don't really mean original because it's not actually my idea. My idea is to emulate one of these modern complex oscillators with another of those modern complex oscillators and a bunch of utilities. The, the most observant of you may have noticed there's been a plethora of new complex oscillators, often triple oscillators, sporting some very interesting and original and unheard of self-modulation. The Trident here, for example, does some ring modulation between two auxiliary oscillators and a main one. And what's remarkable about it is the incredible accurateness of relative pitch between all those oscillators. There isn't the slightest hint of tonal shift across the whole range. And that is why I chose this one, the Rossum Electro Music Trident, not only for its own features, but also because I knew I could emulate, given the right utilities, any triple oscillator by just using its three oscillators as perfectly synced raw material. Anyway, which other modern complex oscillator are we going to emulate with this one? For our first experiment, I settled on future sound systems recombination engine. Engine, engine. Engine or engine? And the reason why I picked the recombination thingy is because while I find its principle really great, I find the sound, according to the videos, um, a little dull. And this is just my opinion and it's not first-hand experience, okay? But I I'm sorry, uh, I don't want to disparage the brand. I have another model from Future Sound Systems here. That's uh, TG4, great, great slicer distortion. Uh, it's... Uh, it's not dull at all, it sounds great, it's one of my favorite distortions. But as for the recombination engine, I thought, yeah, maybe I could do their thing, but better. Or at least not worse, hopefully. And having said that, I'm sure that their recombination engine passed through a TG4 distortion would sound amazing. I just don't have one. I have a Trident. So, first of all, let's see what the recombination engine does exactly. So, um, I'm not going to make nice infographics for you guys. Uh, I'd rather spend my time making music. Uh, so I, I have this nice whiteboard and we're gonna draw some waves, right? Actually, everything I'm about to explain is not exactly how the recombination engine works. It is basically how it works, but not exactly. So take all that's going to follow, more like a wave shaping, wave splicing exercise inspired by the recombination engine, rather than a perfect emulation of it. Also, I now feel that I may have been a tad unfair toward future sound systems, because after watching this kid's video again, I realized that I too want a recombination engine. So, anyway, back to it. Okay, here's how it works. You've got a master oscillator that gives you a pulse, right? This is a pulse. And then you have two auxiliary oscillators. That's not the name they give them, but whatever. And let's say one would give you a sawtooth waveform. typically of a higher frequency than the master wave. And a second auxiliary oscillator giving you, say, I don't know, yeah, a rectified sign. And what the recombination does is combining those auxiliary shapes into the main one. And it would do something like this. Note that both auxiliaries don't necessarily have the same frequency. So, the resulting wave shape will be something like this. Uh, what am I doing? Yeah, something like this, and so forth. So basically, 
If I were to emulate this with affordable utility modules to the extent that any modular gear is affordable, that's another story. What I would want is a pulse that would control a switch that would switch between two waveforms. So I would need one oscillator to control the switching, that would be the black shape here, and then two feeding oscillators to feed that switch. Then, as you can see, this wave shape, the rectified sign, and this wave shape, the sawtooth, they are not centered on the same voltage. So we would need an offset, something to offset one wave up and offset the second wave down. Although I know for experience because I've done it and I will do it again now before you, if we had something like this, so without offset, it would sound basically the same. This sounds like this, plus a big sub that is a square wave mixed into it. So in fact, there is a second way of doing this. Instead of offsetting the waves before switching between them, you could just switch between them like this and then use the same primary pulse here that is your clock and mix it in like a sub square pulse, whatever, and you would get this too. So you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna use it one of both way. I don't know. Okay, this is our setup. We are gonna use the Rossum Trident and Clevis Mix Switch. Clevis is a Belgian brand, so it's a bit of national pride. And the A times B plus C for some basic utility scaling. That's not sexy, but it's gonna be necessary. And anything that scales voltage with offset would do. The mix switch, what does it do? It has four inputs and it either mixes them or switches between them. It can also do a blend of both, switching between two inputs and then mixing in the other two. And that is what we are going to do. For switching, you can use either clock or CV. When you can use clock, it is simpler because you don't have to worry about scaling the CV to address the inputs. But then sometimes it misses a step in my experience. And also if you want to play with pulse width, like we're going to do, well, the pulse width of a clock doesn't matter. So to play with pulse width, we need to feed our pulse in as CV. And that is what requires some scaling and offsetting. And it's a pain to find the right voltages to address these two inputs. That's why I've done it already. This is the right settings. There's even some amplification here. Anyway, I'm going to patch it through. We're going to use the Trident's main oscillator as a pulse slash clock. Let's call it a pulse, yeah. As a switch driver, whatever. Here and here. Now you can see a fast switching between both inputs. At this stage, um, let's feed it through the oscilloscope and hear it. This is the output. And this feeds the computer for hearing and recording. Um, and then I'm going to synchronize the oscilloscope to the pulse so the waveform stays in place. And here you can do that because I won't be modulating the main oscillators with the other two. In fact, I set everything up with the inner modulations set to zero. So this will remain a clean pulse all the way through. 
So we have our pulse here in blue and it drives a switching between those two pots. For now there is nothing in the inputs, so the pots are constant voltages. Let me turn up one of the pots. Yeah. The other one. You can switch the polarity of one of those. Okay. We change the pulse width. And what we have achieved so far is next to nothing. <laughs> but now instead of the constant voltages, we are going to feed both auxiliary oscillators into these inputs. As you can see, I chose different waveforms. This oscillator is a triangle and the one I'm about to patch in now is a sawtooth. We don't have signs, we certainly don't have rectified signs like on the real recombination engine. We could do some wave shaping for that. I haven't set that up, but maybe it's not too late. There's a nice um, 2 HP slot here. A rectifier would fit right in. Maybe we'll do that later. Now, can you see what's happening? Let's play with the pulses with. Let's turn up the volume a little bit. Now, these inputs which are not switched because I'm not in that mode, they, they can mix in another signal. And what I'm gonna do is use the pulse and mix it back in. So this is the pulse. Uh, this output here mi mirrors what's coming from here. Okay. Oh. That's a big sub that you add. Now there is a nice thing, and in fact I, I had nothing to do, it's, it's there already, is that you have perfect tone consistency when varying the pitch. See that? And that's because all three oscillators are perfectly synced and they're tracked together. See? If I change the pitch of one oscillator, let's try this one. Then it doesn't move relatively to the other. See? This shape compresses very nicely and this is the strong suit of the Trident. It's amazing precision. Let's play around with the wave shapes. So in addition to the main pulse width and both auxiliary frequencies, here we can adjust the symmetry of both auxiliaries. Here. And it's gonna show better on the other shape.
also have a phase adjustment. Just not doing much. Oh, and it's still something. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is animate some sweeps and then we'll see if we can emulate the recombination even better. But for now, let's record some stuff. Okay, what do we have here? I finally settled on this modulator. This is not rocket science's wobbler. I won't go into why now, it was just better suited for the task. And I am modulating. This oscillator's phase, and you can see it here in the top half of the resulting wave, and I am modulating the frequency of this oscillator, which you can see here, obviously. I am not modulating the pulse width here, though I could, but we'll do that later. And I have tuned it to F1. Also, I've taken care that the duration of the sweep corresponds to the maximum length of a serum wavetable. But before that, we'll add some parallel distortion to make it more interesting. This is the new tone from Plankton Electronics. And you can see it, but down here is the TG4 from Future Sound Systems, the one I mentioned before. With Dupfer's Matrix Mixer, I am now adding the new tone in parallel. You can't see it, but you can hear it. And now I am adding the TG4. Yeah, that's better. And let's record. Okay, that's nice. Now let's try modulating the main pulses width in addition. That's a bit in the way. the opposite. Oh, that's nice. Let's try to lower the frequency. Let's tune it to a C, maybe. Of course, the, the tuner has a hard time locking it because of all the mess, but we'll manage. Yeah, 
that's about right. And that means we can do a slower um, sweep for the same amount of wave cycles. And we'll just just guess the right length. Now I'd like to say a word about the Serum Wavetable format. I use it because it has become kind of a standard, but there are several things I don't like about it. One of those things is that it's only 44.1 kHz. I'm not trying to convince you that you can hear ultrasounds, it's not about that. It's just that when you pitch a sample or a wavetable down, you lose some brightness unless there are some ultrasounds that would then get audible and prevent that loss of brightness. So, because of its lowish sampling rate, the serum format only allows for pitching wavetables up. Well, you can pitch them down, obviously, but then you lose some brightness. So, what I do is I always try to sample the lowest note I can. The lower, the better. Usually, the limit is my ability to hear what I'm doing. If it's too far down in the subdomain, I can't really hear what I'm doing. But here, it's not a problem with the Trident because of its excellent accuracy. Across all pitches, I can now pitch it all the way down. And there is no tonal shift. The distortions won't behave exactly the same way, but that's okay in my experience. So, now I am uh, slowing down the sweeps. So we keep about 256 cycles per sweep. And by the way, that's the other thing I don't like about the serum format, is that you have a maximum of only 256 cycles per wavetable and yeah so what I'm gonna do is record some extra slow sweeps in addition for you to use in other ways than uh, serum wavetables if you'd like Let's forget the modulation for now and try some other wave shapes. And for that I will need my whiteboard again. So, yeah. Now, as I said before, uh, the recombination engine offers another wave shape, which is a rectifiable sign. What is a rectified sign? Okay, this is a sine wave. And if you rectify it, it means that you take one polarity and reverse it in order to get a wave like this or the inverse of it. No. Okay. Now the recombination engine can sweep continuously from that shape to this shape. So every intermediate shape like this will be swept through. How can we achieve this? Well, first of all, we need a sign. We don't have a sign here. Dubfer makes a quite affordable sign to... No, um, triangle to sign converter, and uh, I don't have it. Then there's the matter of the rectification. How would we do that? Well, here you have a rectifier. It's only a half rectifier. We need a full rectifier, but we'll go into that later. Say we have a rectifier. Okay, how do we vary continuously from unrectified 
to rectify it with. What you would need is an offset before rectification. You add a variable offset. Say this is my sine wave. I need, yes, a larger drawing. And with the offset, we can move the whole shape into positive voltages so that, yeah, that would be zero volts. And we have offset the sine all the way to one or the other polarity. So it doesn't get rectified because rectification happens around the zero axis. Now, say we take a little of the offset back. So the wave would be a little bit dipping into the other polarity. And we would get this. Mm -hmm. And then if we remove all the offset, what we get is a perfectly symmetrical sign. And we would get full rectification. Now, how am I going to transform this half rectifier into a full rectifier? By the way, a half rectifier, if I'm not mistaken, is this. It only lets one polarity through and mutes the other polarity. While a full rectifier inverts one polarity into the other. How do we go from this to this? Well, this has two outputs, one for each polarity. So this is one output and this would be the other output. Mm -hmm. And then what we need is to mix these back together while inverting one of them. We need an inverting mixer, right? Well, it's a good thing because the A times B plus C is also an inverting mixer. I always come back to this one because it's my favorite, but there are many other alternatives. Then we're going to try something else because we still don't have a sign shape. So I happen to have this. This is Bubble Sounds ULFO and it tracks volts per octave all the way through the audible range. And I really don't know why they call it an LFO because it's a VCO just as well. And it's lovely sounding, by the way. And this one includes a rectifier, a continuously varying rectifier, which does exactly what we need. Then we won't need all this setup and we will be using only that. It won't track very accurately relatively to the Trident. Maybe we can mitigate that downside by syncing it because it has a sync input. But uh, the advantage of the Trident was to have all the oscillators inside one complex module with very accurate precision. We will lose that by using an external oscillator, but at least it will show us how it looks and sound with a sine wave. Uh, oh, and you know what? Before all that, we haven't tried the square shape here. So we're going to do that first. Let's try the square shape, as we said. Mm -hmm. Let's change the symmetry. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, let's animate that, record a sweep, and then we'll try the rectification thing, right? So I want to animate this. Let's amplify the secondary pulse. 
Okay, it's not this one, but that one. And let's make something interesting happen in the triangle part. Let's tune it to some nice harmonic. Let's animate that. And then we can try without the clocking pulse mixed in or with much of it. Maybe we could sweep that too. Yeah, let's do that. For that we are going to use the second channel of this A times V plus C completely independently, just as a VCA. Okay, so I forgot that this modulation is bipolar, which means that it's at zero, not at the beginning or the end of the sweep, but right in the middle of it. It's nice, isn't it? But just to achieve what I was aiming at, we need to add an offset on this modulation. Um, this is becoming tedious, but we need an offset and it's out of the frame, it's here. I have one more 8 times B plus C, that's one, two, three, I actually have four of them. And we'll use it to add some offset. Okay, so that's now the opposite of what I was trying to do. And this is more like it. We are almost ready to record. Let me bring the distortions back in. Let's record a C1 and um, as for the correct sweep time, I'm going to just try a bunch of them and then select the best fitting one after recording this video. Okay, nice. Now I am going to undo the progressive mixing of the sub and mix it at a constant maximum level. And now let me get back to C.
Okay, so you see what I did there is get the modulation of the main pulse to span a more interesting range. Good, let's do the rectification thing now. <laughs> 